Welcome back to News Now from Fox, everybody. 9.08 a.m. here on the East Coast, taking a live look over New York City up in the Northeast, where we had just learned that it is about 52 degrees, a little cloudy up there, but overall seeming like a nice spring day. Now, you were just watching a segment from Fox 13 Tampa, their chief political reporter, Craig Patrick, kind of breaking down the information that we learned yesterday as we broke the news that the over Oversight board says Trump is still banned from Facebook and Instagram for now. Yesterday, they decided to uphold their decision to keep him off the platforms, concluding that he incited violence leading to the deadly January 6th Capitol riot. So we wanted to bring on our own expert to kind of weigh in on all of the information and really what this means as far as social media rights and public figures on these social media platforms. So joining us right now is Ms. Jasmine Sandler. She is the CEO of JS Media. She's a global keynote speaker and a thought leader on social branding. Jasmine, good morning to you. How are you doing? Thank you so much for joining us. I'm doing wonderful, Regina. How are you? Happy to be here. I Yes, it's so nice to see you again. We have interviewed Miss Jasmine before on a very similar topic, actually, when he was first banned after the uh, the January 6 riots. So great to have you back. I know it's a lot of information to break down. I actually do want to start with just your initial reaction to the board's decision yesterday. Yeah, well, I can tell you today is uh, May 6, right? So we are only uh, we're only two months out of what happened at the Capitol and we have a new president. And so when it first happened yesterday, I started thinking about kind of the reasons behind that and what that really means. Um, and I really do think that as I thought about it, I thought about the fact that we're in a place now we are trying to bring on a whole new regime and see what that's going to look like in the next four years. And so um, the kind of silence um, and giving some peace around what happened at the Capitol, I think, is, is very important. And I, and I do believe that's what weighted in their decision to ban, to continue to ban Trump, at least for a while, uh, on Facebook and uh, Twitter. Now, we were told that Facebook now has six months to either permanently ban his account or create some sort of regulation. So do you think it's possible that we could see him actually come back on these platforms in six months? Well, I'll tell you what I think is interesting, <laughs> and we're probably going to get to it, but what I think is interesting is that he's started this little blog. It's not a social network. And um, Facebook and the other social networks are allowing people to share these blog posts, um, although it's sensitive material and they are overseeing that. So that, that to me, kind of says that, um, that they're going to be watching him. I mean, that's really their point. When a social network bans anyone, whether it's someone like a public figure or even even just a regular Facebook user, uh, their their Facebook policies since they started uh, when they run into these type of issues is to have heavy monitoring on and then to make decisions based on a user's behavior over time. So honestly, it's actually not so much different than a standard Facebook ban for um anything that goes against their own policies on use of content on Facebook. So do I think they're gonna allow him to come back? I think if he uh, shows great behavior and he continues to show great behavior and I really have no idea what he's going to do, they may, they may allow that uh, because that's part of their policies. But then again, they may entirely change their policies as a board. And I think this is the time that they're really gonna have to sit down and think about it. Yeah, Jasmine, you know, you did. That was kind of my next question, kind of breaking down what exactly, you know, there's obviously been a lot of speculation, a lot of question. This happened to a former president. Can this happen to anybody else? So what really are Facebook's policies right now for just uh, post that incite violence in general, no matter who you are? Yeah, so they have, you know, they have a constant, uh, they're constantly monitoring what's going on in their platform. Um, everything from, let's say, violent posts to um, abuse and promotions. So, you know, for anyone, whether you're just a standard Facebook user or you're using it in a way that can be deemed as a weapon, it is, it is being monitored. 
And so um, they can, it's, you know, they own it. And that, and that kind of goes back to our previous segment when we talked about the interference of tech on free speech, right? So, you know, when you sign up to Facebook or you sign up to any social network, you're signing up and you are uh, signing up and agreeing to their own policies. So um, those policies do say, you know, if you do certain things that go against these policies, we have the power to basically kick you off our network. Yeah, and you know, it's funny, you mentioned his new website. I actually do want to pull up again some videos, some stills that we have. So is this a blog? I, I, can, I understand that um, there's only so much that, uh, you know, people who are on the platform can do. So what really is this new platform? Is it almost like a, a Tumblr? Is he going to vlog? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you exactly what he's doing. Um, I don't know what he's, I'm not a, a fortune teller, but I have my own ideas of what he's trying to do in the future. But what he's doing right now, um, I think is probably a smart move. And honestly, probably the only thing that he could do is that he said, hey, you know what? Or he and his team probably said, hey, you know what? We, we're banned from, from social networks, but we still can have a voice out there because we can have a voice under the Trump brand online. So we're gonna do that through our own blog. And, you know, they may have intentions of building out this blog as a social network. I, again, I have no idea. Um, but, you know, standard uses of a simple blog are that you can have social sharing on a blog. And a blog, to go back to the beginning of blogging, which I've been around since the beginning of blogging, is really about having your own opinion. You know, it's really, these are opinion statements. and sharing your opinion and sharing comments and sharing news. So there is nothing uh, in terms of internet marketing laws, there is nothing wrong with what he's doing in terms of starting a blog. Um, but when it is shared on social networks, those social networks have the right to review those, those shared posts. So, you know, I want to talk about, obviously, he has a very big following. He has a lot of supporters, a lot of them very angry when he was banned to begin with. So do you think that this decision that was made yesterday by the oversight board has the power to influence his supporters to get off Facebook and uh, go to another platform? Well, that's an interesting question. <laughs> um, I can tell you that... If a Trump supporter is a Trump supporter, they're going to be a Trump supporter, and that's that's their that's fine, fine, that's their opinion. Meaning, they probably will support what he's doing on the blog. I think. Uh, also, yesterday, I don't know if you read this, but I'm sure you did. But um, you know, Parler is being um, kind of reaccepted now on some of the app platforms, which I think is really interesting um, because that happened. That was such a short, you know, a short kind of ban. For Parler, which is also, you know, kind of a more Republican speech platform, I guess you would put it. So I think that the people that hold the same values as Donald Trump will support him and support related outlets. I don't know if they're going to leave Facebook. They might strike Facebook, you know, as we've seen with other groups, but I don't know in the long term if they will get off of Facebook because Facebook has so many uses for so many people that um, I really don't see that happening as, as a mass herd exit. Jasmine, my last question to you, you know, as an expert on social media, you're very aware of a lot of policies for multiple platforms. They are now saying, you know, they're, the oversight board is now saying that Facebook needs to reevaluate its policies and it's going to be taking recommendations. So what do you think this reevaluation could look like? Yeah, well, I'm glad they're doing it. I have to say that first. Um, well, what's interesting about their board is that it's a mix of Facebook executives and also um, there is a political, uh, you know, uh, weigh in or, you know, uh, politicians that are somehow involved with the board. So um, the whole issue, if we went back to that, our original segment is this, you know, tech owner at these tech platforms versus free speech. And it's, a, it's just a big constitutional issue. So when you look at a platform that allows free speech, but then has to have the responsibility of monitoring it, you know, that has to be thought through. And so I, that's why I said at the upfront here, I'm glad that they're doing it 
because then now they have they then now they have a real responsibility to do that. And what I think that's going to look like is it's going to be stronger filters around content use, and they're going to be um, stronger bans. I think on uh, not I think, but I know on anything that could possibly incite violence. I don't think that Facebook is going to allow something like what happened on January 6th to happen again. So yeah, Jasmine, I, I, I think that it's going to be uh, more stringent policies, which I, I think is very important. Yeah, and you know, I'm actually glad you just mentioned that. That actually gave me another question. We are talking now, we saw a lot of Republican response about big tech and silencing certain public leaders. Uh, what Nikki, um, Oh my gosh, I can't remember her name, but a, a politician actually made a tweet and she said, okay, we ban former President Donald Trump. There are plenty of dicta dictators and people making neurotic comments on social media. So what about them? What does this say about bias? What does this say about public figures on social media? So do mm -hmm. you feel that Facebook gives a lot of leeway to certain public figures over others? Hmm. Well... I think it's a lot of it's it's a lot based on popularity when it comes to social media. You know, if you think about it in general. So do they give more leeway? They might let things I don't know if the word is slide, but I think that they they entrust public figures and you know when you when you set up like if I were working with a client, I would say, "Okay, well what are you? Are you a business? Are you a public figure? You know, what's your role? What's your brand?" So when you set up a Facebook page as a public figure. Facebook set that up as a category because they believe that whomever sets up a page as a public figure is indeed a public figure. And a public figure has an inherent responsibility to serve, educate, and lead. And you'll see that's with every single social network, not just Facebook, Twitter too, when you're verified on Twitter. So uh, that's why I think that these new regulations, whatever they may be, are going to be important because the way they originally intended to set things up, I think, was thinking of good use of, of social media, which is was the original intention of social media. Um, so I don't know if they, I don't, I don't know if they intentionally provided leeway because of popularity. I just really believe it's how they originally intended the social network to be used. Yes, yeah, Jasmine. It was actually Nikki Haley. That was the post I was referring to, getting a oh, lot thanks. of traction on social media because she said those exact words that I said before. But you have a lot of great points. Thank you so much for joining us. Is there anything else you want our viewers to know about this topic before we send you off? Uh, yeah, I mean, as I, as I kind of generally say, you know, and it, I'm glad you brought it up in today's interview, is that, you know, Every, every person, whether you're a consumer or a public leader, when you get involved in sharing content on these social networks, um, you know, you, you want to be aware that, that these are forms to provide connectivity and provide you with, with opportunities to develop business, with connect with family, right? So, you know, using them in a good way is, is really important. And it also, as somebody that's been in internet marketing for almost 20 years, I want internet marketing to continue, and I think so do consumers. So um, thinking about utilizing social network in a way that supports people instead of a way that divides people is something that is very important to me. So that's what I want, want people to think about as they think about this ban. <laughs> All right. Well, Jasmine Sandler, thank you so much for joining us here on News Now from Fox. We really thank you for this insight, and we hope you have a great rest of your week and a great weekend. Thanks. You too, Regina. Talk to you soon. Good to see you. And taking a live look now.